Hello, thanks for watching the Bioforma Finder 3.1 help video. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use some of the new features in uh, Bioforma Finder 3.1. In particular, we're going to look at new peak detection in the software. So this is going to be a peptide mapping experiment, and I'm going to show you how you can set up the experiment, and then I'm going to show you how you can use the filters in the results to actually find new peaks. So here we have the peptide mapping homepage, and in this example we're going to name our experiment. And this is going to be a NIST, um, we'll say, spike study. We're going to browse for the raw files, and I'm going to select the control and a spike uh, sample. In this case, the control is just NIST digested, and then the spike has the PRTC peptide standard spiked into it. So I've browsed both raw files. Now new to 3.0 or 3.1 is the ability to, um, we've enhanced the ability to assign the conditions. So as you just start to type in the software, the raw files will be um, automatically assigned. And so you pick out keywords in, the in the, each of the raw files and it'll um, assign it automatically for you. You can still select from the drop down which file if you need to change it. Um, to assign the correct condition. Okay, and you'll notice that we have a reference condition. This is used when we calculate the ratio in the results table. In this case, I'm going to hit, um, I'm going to select the um, NIST antibody, and this is going to be a peptide mapping experiment. You'll also see that there's a targeted uh, peptide, and uh, please check out the other help videos that talk about the targeted workflow to explain what this new feature is. I'm going to pick um, a basic default method. Actually, I would normally pick the basic default method and go in and edit the method and, and show you the parameters, but for the time's sake, I've already done that, so I, I'm going to pick new peak detection. Um, I'm going to uncheck this, and I'm going to add this to the queue. We'll see how long it takes to process. Um, I've already processed the results, so I, I think I'll just show you what I have there. Um, so this is the original one I did, and again, it doesn't take very long to process these two raw files. It's extremely quick, but let's go ahead and let me show you. Now you're going to see that this is a non-targeted experiment, um, so I'm not looking for anything specific, but I'm trying to find new peaks, and actually this one just finished, um, so we could uh, open that one, but let's go ahead and open this one. So I'm going to double click on this, so you see it's, it's quite quick. So um, here's the peptide mapping um, process and review page. Now there's quite a bit of new f uh, features in here. You're going to see a trend ratio uh, for multiple files. You're going to see trend MS area when you have multiple raw files. Remember we assigned the reference condition. So here's the reference condition. So we had a control and we had a spike. You can change this if you'd like to pick the different reference condition, which will affect the ratios um, and will automatically update. Okay, so, th so the goal of this video is to be able to find new peaks. Um, so uh, what we have down here is we have our table. And remember I told you we have ratios. Now we're looking at the spike versus the control. And we did identify some of the NIST um, peptides. So if we look, we can see the NIST peptides are here. Okay, now the default view um, of the chromatogram shows you the base peak and then SIC for your first file. But what I like to do when I look for new peaks is I like to right click and go to select chromatogram. This window. Now when you're in the select chromatogram window, um, you have a variety of different plots that you can show. So we're going to show the selected ion chromatogram um, only. So we're going to uncheck the base peak chromatogram and I'm going to select both raw files. So if you think about you would be doing this in Freestyle or Qual Browser where you're going to actually do SICs or XICs for both raw files for a specific peptide. So I'm going to say OK. And if you're, um, in some cases that can take a little bit of time if your files are on a server or something, or if you have a large number of raw files when you do that. Uh, but they're reading the raw files, so the software, um, it's all dependent on its ability to read the raw file. So you can zoom in. So for this peptide, we can see that um, you know, the elution looks really nice. Um, the SICs for both raw files, again, the control and the spike look good. Now, the, and the ratio for this peptide is one. Um, so it's, the ratio is calculated from the MS area. Um, and if you want to see the MS area for each individual file, you can expand this column 
and the values right here. So that's the MS area for each raw file. Now, also new in 3.1 is we have an MS area bar plot. I like to use the bar plot to visually see um, that these two areas are exactly pretty much the same. So again, this is the control file. This is the spike file. This information is used to calculate the ratio. Now, if we close the second le level of the table and we scroll across, you're going to find a ratio column. We scroll towards the end. And so, let me keep going so you can see. There we go. Okay, so we have a ratio here. And then um, you can see it's showing you the ratio, so it shows you this value. We also have a max condition and min condition. So if you're trying to do trend analysis and you have a bunch of different conditions, you could use these to, to, to pull out something. So let's say you have a, a zero hour, or a two hour, or a four hour, and a 12 hour. And if you wanted to see something that possibly goes up in the 12 hour, and it kind of you know, has a, a positive slope, you could set your max condition to, to um, 24 or control, whichever your end point is, and your min condition could be the opposite. And this might help you be able to pull out trends. Okay, so it's a, a way that you could possibly pull out trends whenever you're looking for um, changes in multiple conditions. We also have an, a, um, a column called overall max MS area. And so this is something you can use if you want to say, okay, I don't want to see anything. The signal has to be at least 1e to the 5 or 1e to the 6. It's a way of setting off a, th setting a threshold um, for, the, for the differences when you're trying to find differences. When you go really low into the data, you can find a lot of false positives or things that you're not quite sure if they're true differences. So this is a filter that you can kind of use as, as a thresholding um, uh, filter as well. Okay, so how would I go about trying to find differences in this data set? And again, this, the spiked was spiked with PRTC um, peptides, and when I did the search, I did not include those peptides in the sequence, in the protein sequence, and I can, um, but I didn't in this example. So I should be able to find um, those components for those peptides for the PRTC in here, but they're not going to be identified. Okay, so um, in order to search that, or to look for those, I can, I can do this a variety of different ways. Um, what I like to do is I know, uh, for example, that they're in the spiked. I know that I put them in the spiked, so I could use the max condition. I could say, show me things that are in the spiked. Okay, so that would be things that have to go up in the spike. Okay, that's one way I could do it. Um, I can also use the ratio. So the ratio um, column in this example, because I know they're in the spiked, it's going to be greater than uh, one, or great, you know, it's going to be up. So if I sort by this column, now I'm seeing the differences here, right? But what if you're not sure? What if it could go up or down? If you have you know things that can go different ways. So what I'll show you is how you can do a custom filter. So if you click here, you're going to see custom, and it's going to pop up. And now we can build a combination of filters. I can say add a condition, and I'm going to say uh, greater than, let's say, a thousand because these are present absent. Okay, and I could say add a condition. And I could say less than, and let's just say 0.2, because I know it's, it, they're not less than, nothing's going down. Now, what you be careful when you read your filters down here at the bottom. It's going to say um, greater than 1,000 and less than 0.02. So we need to change the function here. Uh, we don't want it to be and, we want it to be or. So we toggle. So when you toggle, now it's or. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. Okay, so now we've applied. Um, a filter here, okay, for the ratio. We're saying the max condition has to be um, spiked, which we, we can turn that one off if we want, or you can turn it back on. And then we could use the overall MS area if we want, or you could use this to sort and look at the most abundant signal. So in this case, let's click, okay, and so this is the most abundant one. Now what I really like is I like to be able to see what's happening with the chromatograms, and I also like to be able to see here what's happening in um, a bar plot view. And so if you look, now none of these should have identification, so we're gonna look at the protein column and see, oh, here we have a heavy chain that might show up. So this is a little different in the heavy chain. Um, here we have one. Okay, so we scroll through and let's look. Okay, there they are. So these are the PRTC peptides. Okay, 
so I can actually go through and find all these. Now, if I went back, I could actually add that sequence in there and then I could confirm them. Okay, so I hope this shows you a little bit of ways. Um, oh, so let me show you the MS overall MS area. So what you could do uh, with overall MS area, you could say, um, I'm gonna click on this side. This is another way to do the filter. I'm gonna say greater than, let's start kind of abundant first. Let's say greater than one um, E to the five. So I don't wanna see any signal that's less than one E five. And again, you can sort by this, and now you can click. And you'll be able to see that um, these are the, the spikes. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you is there's a comment column in here that you can type in. So you could put um, different, or you, you could put need to investigate. You can put whatever you want. Um, need to, to um, search, what, whatever you want to type in here. Now the great thing about it is it saves it automatically. So if I go back and reopen this result, it's gonna, you're gonna see this automatically. It's automatically pushed into the software. Um, it also gets pushed into the mapping tab on the modification summary. Um, so, you, so this is kind of a record keeping for you. And you can also save the results as something different so if, if you're querying the results and you're going through and you want to you don't want to um, overwrite the existing you can save the results and say um, you know i'm at this stage uh, you can also move the columns so if you want to move them around you can put this over here so this this comment column is extremely helpful um, as you're going through querying you can you can say not real difference um, you know whatever you want to put in here and it, it's a good way to keep track of what you're doing Okay, so this is um, how to do differential analysis or how to look for new peak detection using BioPharma Finder 3.1. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, check out the other videos. Thanks.